Welcome to the second episode of Babylon is Burning. Today we talk about online trolling. Welcome. In the studio today we have Chrissy Cook. Uh, Chrissy, I know a troll, it's like this small figure with <laughs> pink hair that's standing upright, but there are also other trolls? There are other kinds of trolls, although those ones are, I think, my favorite. Uh, the kinds of trolls that I do research on are people on the internet usually being a little bit nasty to another person. This is kind of our idea of an online troll. And so what then is the being nasty about? <laughs> That's the trolling behavior? That's usually the trolling behavior, but it can come in a lot of different varieties. So I brought two examples with me today. So if we can show the first one on the screen, I'll show you an example of YouTube trolling. Who's that Pokemon? It's oh yes, this is uh, the Rickroll, right? Yes. Yes, I've been Rickrolled myself, <laughs> unfortunately. I have as well. So for those of you who have not been rickrolled, you lucky few, uh, a rickroll is when you put a video of something that you expect to see and then switch it out for the ever lovely Rick Astley about halfway through. Yeah, there are also there are versions with goats, I think also. Yes, the screaming goat was a popular iteration a bit later on. Uh, but so that would be trolling because I mean, when it happened to me, I, I kind of felt tricked, <laughs> but I wouldn't say that I felt really bad. No, I agree. And this is something, this is a common misconception that people get about trolling is that it's always this bad, horrible thing. Um, so rickrolling is a much more lighthearted version of trolling that you will see on YouTube. But I did bring another example with me and this one you'll see is a little bit different. Okay, so it's kind of a threat, I guess, made to, uh, to feminists? Yes, in this case it is a threat made to a group of people with the intention to create provocation, to create anger and an extreme reaction that they can then enjoy. So this is the other side of trolling. So you have things like rickrolling, which are quite lighthearted and quite silly, and then you have these that can actually border on hate speech. And so trolling is very, very broad, even though people often define it very, very l narrowly in media. Okay, I've heard that you have talked to trolls. I have. Uh, I would really like to know more, but first we'll have a commercial break. Welcome back to Babylon is Burning. Chrissy, you have, had in, you have actually talked to trolls, so I, I want to know all about the interviews themselves, but the first question on my mind is, how on earth do you find people to interview? That's the first question I get at every academic conference ever. Um, the secret is you pay them. And uh, so what we did is we put advertisements out on YouTube and Facebook and groups uh, where trolls may be. Uh, and we focused on gaming because there are a lot of more popular trolls in games that you can see on YouTube, for example. 
and we said, okay, if you have trolled before and you're willing to talk about it, uh, please sign up for our study and we'll pay you 15 euros for an interview. Okay, and so you did the interviews then, uh, I assume, over Skype or were yes. these local persons or...? No, we actually had a really wide variety of people. So we had at least one Korean, we had some people from Colombia, we had Canadians, we had Europeans, we had everything. So it was all done on Skype. So trolling is a global phenomenon? It is a global phenomenon, although there are some slight differences depending on where you're from, what you think trolling is. And so are trolls nasty persons in real life? Surprisingly not. Actually, a lot of them were business owners, were master students, were people as old as, I believe, 28 or 35. We, we have this idea that trolls are teenagers, and that's completely not true. You A well, lot. I also have the idea that it's like old grumpy men, but <laughs> maybe that's not the gaming troll? Perhaps not. In gaming, they have more of an idea that it's uh, younger. So in when we were looking at the gaming community, it was quite surprising to get people in their late 20s. But uh, in general, you do you find quite a variety, but usually men. It's very rare to find female trolls. Okay, and so why do they troll? What do the trolls get out of trolling? It's a very good question. It's one that we asked them, and the trolls responded by saying a couple different things. The most popular was personal enjoyment. So they just have fun. They laugh at the other person's expense. It's, it's a joke, the same way that someone might have done a prank phone call in, in years past. So uh, that is the number one reason to troll. Uh, to alleviate boredom is another one. So they get, in the case of gaming, they get so used to the game that it doesn't give them any excitement anymore. So they want to have a different experience, so they troll to make the game more interesting, in their own words. And the final one is actually very strange, and it is to make friends. And you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't necessarily uh, think of this for trolls. I know in Dutch there's a, a, a saying, a meisjes blake, kusjes vragen. Mm -hmm. And that's how I usually explain it to, to uh, the people who ask. It's the more you tease them, the more you like them and want to be your friend. So you often find trolls, or I shouldn't say often, occasionally find trolls that do it to engage in conversation and to start a conversation with someone to eventually become their friend. But then they would troll the victim? Exactly. And then there's even stories I think my favorite story, if we have time for it, is one guy who was in this game and he started pushing other people's characters into the water. And he would do this, he would just walk along the beach and push people into the water. And then people would come, they'd say, oh, that was funny, and they'd, they'd join in. And eventually they have this giant conga line of people pushing other people into the water. And it became this community event for them. And so it's a strange way, the victim becomes the troll as well, but they also become the friend of the troll in, okay. in these strange Yeah, situations. because you compare it to like making a prank call, but mm -hmm. you make the prank call together with other friends like to kind of show yes. off, uh, you know, how maybe manly <laughs> you are and how much gut you have. Would, would yeah. you say that this is also kind of the social dynamic explaining? It could be. We're not completely sure as of yet. The trolls that we talked to were, of course, focused on gaming and there's a lot of other trolls such as the YouTube Rickroll that we saw earlier. So we can't be 100% sure, but it does appear that way. And trolls do operate both on their own and with friends. So it's a possible social dynamic explanation. So how do you explain the fact that most of them are, are male? That's something we're still struggling with. Um, one of the possibilities is the fact that it does come from the tech industry. So the earliest trolls come from Usenet forums and from online games. And these are, historically speaking, male-dominated areas. So the first people that were trolled were also the first trolls, and they tended to be men. And so it, there's one a theory that it spreads from that. Um, the others, other theories that I've heard and that I've, I've looked into briefly is that men tend to be more territorial, and trolling is a way to show your mastery, that you know how the internet works. You're not a noob. You aren't one of these lesser people. So men have this more dominant instinct. That's another theory I've come across. And the very few female trolls that I have encountered, very rare, but they have all been what I like to call a vigilante troll. So they only troll other trolls. Okay. So yeah. with women, it seems to be a different motivation. And that motivation, I guess, isn't as strong as 
the more varied mo uh, motivations you get in men. Okay, super interesting. Uh, I'd love to know more, and we will know more, but here's another commercial break first. Every step online leaves digital footprints. We create a digital self. Today, cultures and societies are shaped by digitalization and globalization. We send chat messages, artists expand their work to vlogging, and we're connected with different people, places, and cultures 24 seven. During our program, Online Culture, you study culture in this digitalizing and globalizing world. Digitalization influences the shape of communication and cultural products. We have always changed and changed our behavior according to the context we find ourselves in. What is new about digital environments is that now we can crop, filter, Photoshop, and in other ways edit our self-representation. Graduate as an independent thinker who will be essential for tomorrow's job market. Visit our campus, www.tilburguniversity.edu. Welcome back to Babylon is Burning. Chrissy, I have to say it's easy to be a troll, right? You're behind <laughs> the screen, nobody sees you, nobody knows who you are. Is this a, a key feature of online trolling? That really depends on who you ask. But for me personally, based on my own research, I would say yes. Almost all trolls are either anonymous or what we call pseudonymous, which means they operate under a username. So they're identifiable by their username, but we couldn't find them in real life. So almost always, it's very rare that you find a troll that is not operating either anonymously or pseudonymously. They like to hide. And well, you've, you've talked to them mm -hmm. uh, when they were in the interview. Mm -hmm. um, were they hiding or were they kind of proud of what they were doing? That's a really good question because it's something that I did notice. They were very excited and happy that someone was asking them about their trolling. This was their, their moment in the sun, you know? This was where they had the chance to detail their exploits for the world. So even though there is an element of hiding, you don't want to be punished for it, but you do want to be recognized for it. There's a bit of a duality there. That's, uh, that was really interesting to see in the interviews. Okay, um, it's a very personal observation, mm -hmm. but would you say that trolling is sometimes motivated out, out of, kind of frustrations with society? Absolutely, and that's where you get into the more political or the more Twitter trolling. The example that I showed earlier was from Twitter. And on these platforms, you get people trying to shove as much anger and as much provocation into 140 characters as they possibly can. And this is where you get into the Russian, twi uh, Russian Twitter bots. You get into all these different dimensions outside of gaming and some with gaming as well. And uh, there it becomes much more complex and it also becomes a lot more about frustration with some cause or some... Uh, some action that's been done. But the consequences for the person who is being trolled can sometimes be very serious, Absolutely. up to the point where people are being doxxed or um, even threatened in real life. Absolutely. Is this something that the troll considers? In some cases, yes. Um, probably the most famous example, you mentioned doxing. Uh, there's another phenomenon that's really specific to the online gaming community called swatting. And it's where the viewers on a Twitch channel, which is essentially YouTube for gamers, uh, live streaming, uh, they find out the actual address of the person who is live streaming a game and they call a SWAT team into that person's home so that they can watch the SWAT team infiltrate the person's home which of course is problematic for American security. In this case, it's usually Americans. Um, it's problematic for the person who's being swatted and it is a criminal offense <laughs> for the person who's calling with no reason. So there can be offline repercussions, but unfortunately it's very hard to identify that back to the troll because of the anonymity or pseudonymity involved. Okay, what you see also in the gaming community, community then I think of like the Gamergate scandal. Of course. Is that the trolling behavior gets kind of intersected with other power dimensions, like the gender dimension. Absolutely. Did you see that in the uh, interviews that you did? Because you ha had mostly male 
gamers who were trolling? I did. Shockingly, there was only one guy who mentioned Gamergate specifically, and he was from the online shooter, uh, or FPS, first person shooter gaming community, which was the one arguably most involved in Gamergate at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was very little talk about this, but actually in the academic community, we're seeing a lot more about what they call gender trolling, which is specifically the, the make me a sandwich kind of trolling, or go back to the kitchen. Um, these feminine stereotypes that men are bringing to the forefront. And you see that not just in gaming now, you see this even on academic blogs, you see this in YouTube comments, Twitter, all over the place, and it's becoming a real problem. And is it then a motive to silence certain groups? Is, is that the ultimate motive then? I don't know if it's silence so much as ridicule. They want to make the other group look stupid and unable to control their own emotions. So the best thing that that people can do is actually not give them an overreaction and try to think of what they're looking for and not give it to them. Okay, play hard to get. Play hard to get, although that could be gender trolling, so I have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so final, <laughs> final question, Chrissy. Have you ever trolled? No, I have never trolled, which uh, some people would say, how can you research? Um, but I always say it's because I'm an only child. Only children don't understand the joy of ruining someone else's day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for being with us and we look forward to uh, have you watch our next episode. Thank you. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out!